Stepping aside from some of the wild and crazy cartoon conspiracy theories, it's time to dabble in reality and dabble in the real world, taking a look at some conspiracy theories of our actual existing universe and not some fictional drawn cartoon, man. I don't, I don't know, man. There's a lot of people out here. There's a lot of conspiracy theorists who come up with some of the most wild and crazy concepts surrounded by literally any topic to ever exist ever, dude. And some of them sound like they belong in a psychiatric facility under 24-hour surveillance uh, restrained in a straitjacket. And some of them, some of them are a lot more believable. This time... We have the Antarctica theory. I'm not too sure where this is going. All I, the only conspiracy surrounded by Antarctica that I know of is the hollow earth and that possibly the entrance to the inner earth, the hollow earth, is, is somewhere in Antarctica or some shit. So, see what this is about. The Antarctica theory. Throughout our world, Few places are more remote and mysterious than the continent of Antarctica. Spanning over 5 million square miles, this mass of land and ice is over twice the size of Australia, yet it holds a grand total of zero permanent residents. Its brutally frigid conditions and strict visitation laws have made it impossible to fully explore, leading many to question what secrets it may be hiding in its icy landscape. What is... What the fuck was that? The in... The invasion! In the mid to late 1950s, the United States was heavily invested in nuclear technology, and specifically nuclear weapons. Right. In the midst of the Bikini Cold bottom. War, it was imperative for the country to gain superior knowledge on the subject than the Russians. Because of this, the United States was constantly building and experimenting on all things nuclear. Over the course of the Cold War, over 1,000 nuclear devices were fired as part of U.S. government experiments, with few being as controversial as the experiments conducted in Operation Argus. The main goal Argus. of Argus was to test the effects that nuclear weapons had in colder, high-altitude regions. With these experiments, an estimated three nuclear missiles were fired in the vicinity of Antarctica. However, the results of this experiment were never finalized, and the whereabouts of the location in which the missiles hit is still very much a mystery. Following this test, the task force in charge of the program was quickly dissolved, and the majority of the documents associated with the project were destroyed. Like everything, bro, it seems, it seems like every type of controversial governmental, like, experiments that they do, they, they always get shut down. And the records just get burned into existence, bro. Like the shit with the CIA brainwashing people. Now we got this nuclear stuff, bro. Like they're just like they're fucking around and then just pretending like nothing ever happened, dude. Documents was also the film reel that would have shown actual footage of the tests. So this alone is pretty sketchy. The destruction of evidence, the hiding of evidence as to what happened there, is something that definitely raises some red flags. But it's also something that's not too surprising for that time period. But where this whole situation gets very strange is when you take a look at a previous mission that took place in Antarctica that has confused the public to this day. In 1946, the United States Navy sent troops to Antarctica to supposedly set up a military base and to train them for cold weather conditions as part of Operation High Jump. Now this wasn't a small convoy or anything like that. All in all, 4,700 troops were sent up to the frigid landscape Jeez. in December of that nice. year. Nice. Imagine, imagine signing up for the Navy, thinking you're about to go to war to blow up some commies or something. It's like, oh, hey, by the way, you get to spend your uh, the next few weeks in the frigid, desolate location of Antarctica, dude. You're, you're, you will freeze your nuts off, literally. You will have no sense of warmth any part of your body. Like, dude, I would hate life at this point. The operation lasted just barely a few months as the weather conditions supposedly got too severe. Which, I mean, I'm not sure what they were expecting there, if we're being honest. I mean, it, it's Antarctica. 
In total, it was reported that four men lost their lives in the short expedition. However, some believe that the number is actually much higher than that, and that in their time up there, the United States Navy was attacked. It is theorized that upon the trip through the harsh landscape of Antarctica, the brigade was attacked by unknown crafts which forced them unknown, to retreat out of the area. Unknown crafts. The attack was highlighted in a now leaked Soviet report where KGB agents had gained knowledge from US soldiers present at the site of the attack. The US soldiers claimed that while they were being attacked by these hostile forces, they reportedly opened fire on the crafts, ultimately shooting one down into the water below. However, okay. the advanced technology of these crafts proved way too much for the fleet to handle, and they were forced to retreat after losing several aircrafts and men in the attack. After the fleet returned back to the United Aliens. States, one of the leaders of the expedition, Admiral they got Byrd, a, they got ambushed by, they got ambushed by aliens. Fleet returned back what? to the United States. One of the leaders of the expedition, Admiral Byrd began discussing with the media that the United States should set up defense bases in the polar regions, and that flying crafts from the area posed a serious threat to the United States. After these shocking and controversial statements, Byrd was thrown into a mental institution and never heard from again. Nice. Piecing together the alleged attack on Operation High Jump with the subsequent bombing of the region with Operation Argus, the whole situation leaves a dark theory. Some believe that Operation High Jump was actually an invasion of Antarctica in order to fight off some mysterious force. I mean, why else would they send that many soldiers? Wait, so this they're saying, so they're saying that it wasn't actually training. They didn't send the troops up there for the purpose of training them in cold weather. They sent the troops up there because there was some threatening, threatening force up there and they went to go, they went to go neutralize it. Soldiers there. Like, do you really need 5,000 men to set up a research base? And maybe when this operation failed, and when the United States Navy realized that they were no match for this advanced weaponry, perhaps they fired those nuclear weapons to take care of the enemy once and for all. Now, I feel like this theory is definitely out there, but the fact that it was in an actual Soviet report, and the fact that Byrd was speaking out about this enemy and was quickly silenced, makes it still intriguing to me. Plus, I can't get over why they would send that many people up there to set up a base, and I can't get over why they would fire those nuclear weapons in Antarctica for research when they didn't even end up posting any actual research from their findings. And what about the tapes? Okay, you know what? Let, let me chill. Let me chill real quick. So obviously I have a lot of nice. questions about this theory. I mean, he's I not wish. wrong. He's not. There's, there's a lot of very shady, unanswered questions. The only thing I could have said is maybe... Maybe they, you know and I'm saying they, they pulled up to Antarctica for the purpose of their research or whatever, and then some foreign enemy found out about it and then pulled up on them and started spinning the block, all out warfare, and then the people who were already in Antarctica. I think this is the U.S. right, or 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 he said something about the Soviets, right? Whoever the fucks in Antarctica, they got clapped, dude. They got pulled up on and clapped, so they dipped. And then that's it. That's that's the only explanation that I have, is, is that maybe somebody else pulled up on them. Perhaps the biggest one to me is what actually was this unknown force that may or may not have attacked the Navy that day. And the theories into this are just flat out crazy. Aliens, here we go. Many of the most here popular we go. conspiracy theories surrounding the region of Antarctica deal with alien life. Its vast and unexplored landscape makes it one of the only places on Earth that could really hold alien life that would go completely undetected. Like, aliens could just be chilling up there right now, and guess what? Uh, we'd have no idea. I mean, I'm not saying they are, but we really can't say that they aren't, right? Now, throughout the years, many they have not. pointed to things like they not. pyramids. Maybe! Oh my god, I just had a revelation! I just had a revelation. Antarctica. Where is Antarctica? In terms of the entire globe. It's the north. You know what else is in the north? The North Pole. He said that the aliens very well could be here. We wouldn't know it. You know who else? We don't know exactly where they are. And we don't we don't know who where they are when they show up. Santa Claus. Maybe Santa Claus is an alien. 
and he's kicking it in the North Pole. And then they pulled up to Antarctica, and Santa seen them as a threat, so he sent out his his, his, his military elves, and they wiped the fucking floor clean, got him the fuck out of there, so that he could continue to run it, run his workshop in peace. I I figured it out, dude. I, th I think I've got it figured out, bro. They are bases of aliens. Antarctica is in the South Pole. Now I look dumb as hell, dude. Nice. They think that aliens actually created these things. God and damn it, I thought I had something. On things like Google Earth that seem to look like man-made or... Maybe Santa lives in the South Pole, and he wants us to think that he's in the North Pole. Feel like I got Alien that? Feel like that's a good rape. explanation. And due to our inability to explore these regions and confirm or deny whether these are structures or not, it causes our imagination... Wait, what about st made. who's structuring things? They think pyramid structures throughout the region. Now, throughout the years, many have pointed to things like these pyramid structures throughout the region and claim that they are bases of aliens. They think that aliens... That looks just like a mountain to me. Things. And further structures have also been spotted on things like Google Earth, that seem to look like man-made or alien-made buildings. Yeah, that looks fucking weird. And due to our inability to explore these regions that looks and like confirm some transformer or deny shit. whether these are structures or not, it causes our imagination to kind of run wild with what could have made them and what could be living in them. Now, me personally, I tend to view these structures as just kind of weird-shaped rocks, but I will give some credit that quite a few of them do look pretty convincing. Now, just recently, a photo from Google Earth went viral of what appears to be a spaceship crashed in the snow on an island just outside of Antarctica. With this photo, you see a definite trail behind a large tube-like object, making it appear that whatever this thing was, it had just crash-landed. Yeah, now, that's fucking weird. this photo has quickly weird. become synonymous with alien life in the region, though some experts are quick to dismiss it as a rock that simply slid down a mountain via avalanche. It's a really interesting photo that I has don't know. many who believe that aliens are truly out I there. don't know, bro, because I feel like if it was a rock from an avalanche, I feel like it, I feel like the snow would be messed up in a lot more places than just this one perfectly clean straight line, dude. There's there's no way like an avalanche is just pure and utter chaos. So I feel like there'd be stuff going all the way all around here, you know what I'm saying? Not just the one perfectly straight line though some experts are quick to dismiss mm. it as a rock that simply mm. slid down the mountain now i'm not saying happened. aliens it's a really interesting but that was something that many who believe that aliens are truly out there excited and there's no shortage of other photos like this that supposedly show crashed ufos in the snowy arctic many believe that these crafts are the work of alien life forms thriving in this desolate region these people also tend to believe that these aliens were also responsible for the attack on the U.S. Navy. It's a frightening concept, thinking that hostile that alien is life fucking terrifying. may be living in Antarctica, and the idea that they have attacked before may also mean that they may attack again. And with no defense bases anywhere in the region, nothing would be stopping them from attacking, let's say, a, a research team of ours in the area. But to me, the idea of aliens being responsible for these mysterious crafts is not even close to being the most interesting theory. Really? Oh, nice. This fucking clown. Nice. This fucking guy. Bro, okay. This shit goes crazy. Uh, let me just start by introducing the theory. What happened? And then I'm going to backtrack and explain how it could be possible. So stick okay. with me here. Okay. So the theory I'm here ready. is that members of the Nazi party were able to escape to Antarctica after World War II. It's said that the Nazis also took with them advanced weaponry from the war. Weaponry like flying saucers that were responsible for the attack on Operation High Jump. Okay, so confusing and weird, I know, but let's- I mean, hey! I mean, hey, isn't that what I said? Cause this is what, the 1940s, right? This is, this is like right before, this is right, this is right before the, um, World War II, right? World War II was the 50s, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not dumb as hell. So, I mean, that's, that's what I said. I said, what if it was some, like, type of foreign, foreign enemy, right? The Nazis, and they just fucking pulled up on them. Like, like that, that's what, I feel like that's a pretty Practice solid explanation. Even before the start of World War II, Hitler had a fascination with Antarctica. 
There, he sent multiple fleets to survey the landscape and supposedly look for margarine fat due to the fact that the country's supply would soon be cut off during the war. On these missions, it is theorized that Hitler saw an opportunity as the vast continent provided the perfect conditions for a hideout should things go wrong. Now fast forwarding a bit here to the actual war, it is no secret that Nazis were innovators and they were obsessed with creating new and crazy technology. These technologies included things like wonder weapons and all sorts of other shocking and disturbing things. And it is believed that at one point the Nazis set their sights on creating an advanced aircraft that would be ultra powerful and especially difficult to bring down. These crafts would have been something completely new to our world if they were actually able to create them. That's and in this crazy. Theory, believers claim that they actually did. They believe that the Nazis were able to build these flying saucers in secret and use their overpowered weaponry to defeat their enemies. Dude, looking this, see bro, the craziest thing about this is this isn't that crazy. Like, the Nazis were definitely like technologically advanced people, bro. Like they, in, in, at, at the beginning of the war, the Nazis were beating the shit out of everybody because they had the best weapons, they had the best planes, they had the best tanks, bro. When America decided to start to fight, the first tanks they threw out there got clapped up by the fucking Nazis. So I, I feel like the Nazis, yeah, when it comes to technology, bro, the Nazis were on a whole other level at that time, dude. So this, this doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, all the other crazy stuff that they were able to invent, I mean, it's still improbable, but it's definitely not impossible that they were actually able to accomplish something like this. Okay, so if they had this advanced weaponry, how did they end up in Antarctica? Well, perhaps after World War II had ended, the remaining Nazis fled their homeland to avoid persecution and landed in Antarctica, where they likely would have never been found. And the idea of Nazi soldiers and officials escaping Germany after World War II is something that is definitely not outlandish. So many of them have been reported dead, and yet very few bodies were actually ever discovered from the high-ranking Nazi officials. Which that's a whole conspiracy theory of its own, whether these people are still alive or not. But if they are, maybe they fled to Antarctica. And maybe they took their advanced aircrafts with them to A, escape And they, they disguised themselves as penguins. Protected, and to B, keep their technology a secret. <laughs> disguise themselves as penguins to blend in with I the mean, environment. Kind of makes sense because as I <laughs> mentioned before, the Nazis had more information on Antarctica than probably any other country at the time. Because remember, they had sent crews there on multiple occasions. Also, in 2016, Russians actually discovered a legitimate abandoned Nazi base in Antarctica. So they had at least one legitimate settlement there, and it might not be too far-fetched to believe that maybe they had more that just haven't been discovered yet. So perhaps when the US Navy was visiting the area way back in 1946, they stumbled a little too close to the Nazis' secret base. And the Nazis used their advanced aircrafts to fire at the crews and deter them from coming any closer and truly discovering their hideout. See, that can make a lot of sense. Further, I feel like this is the most logical one. I, I, feel, I feel like this is the most logical one, dude. Just, just, just knowing the timeline and the history. Retaliated by shooting those missile tests in the area in order to secretly and quietly kill off the remaining Nazi troops. It is so crazy to think about. It is so weird. It is so probably not true, but it so totally could be. Maybe someday we'll find out if there was any truth to these wild theories. But until then, many of us will remain fascinated by the mysteries of Antarctica. Nice. So An Antarctica is apparently either inhabited by a, so a secret society of aliens, or it was formerly inhabited by a secret group of Nazis hiding away from persecution, dude. Nice, dude. Now listen, I feel like the Nazi explanation is a lot more logical than the aliens, dude. Because why the fuck would the aliens choose Antarctica, bro? Antarctica is the most boring place, bro. If I was an alien and I'm pulling up to Earth, bro, I'm dropping down in Rio and partying with some Brazilian women shaking ass, dude. I'm not, I'm not picking Antarctica, bro. The Nazis... They needed to get away. They didn't want to get arrested, so they pulled up to Antarctica. They had, a, they had a base in Antarctica. So I think when the Navy got attacked in Antarctica, it was probably the Nazis, like I said at the beginning, dude.
But this one was this one was interesting. This one, this one was interesting.